All right, guys, uh, we're going to get everything rolling here. Uh, it's eight o'clock. So first of all, welcome to the first Sleep TV of 2024. Uh, I'm super excited here to talk to everybody. Uh, I see a lot of cool, familiar faces and, and friends hopping in. So that's that's awesome. Um, if you're new to this or, or new to SGS, uh, the way we structure things with Sleep TV, uh, you, we're in a, a Zoom here. I know we're live on Facebook as well. Uh, if you have questions, type them in the Q&A box. Uh, we'll kind of collect them all through the evening here. And, and then as we get towards the end, if I haven't specifically addressed it, a lot of times through the course of the lecture uh, and just talking through some things, we'll have already answered it. Um, but if you have questions, type them in the Q&A &A and, and we'll kind of cycle through those at the end. Or you can type them in the chat just to me and, and I'll, I'll get them that way. Um, but... You know, first and foremost, again, welcome to the the first Sleep TV of 2024. Um, if you were on our last one in December, we we touched on this similar topic, but this has been such a hot thing that we decided to run it again uh, and and catch everybody up because this is all we're getting for questions here at SGS this year and and uh, as we kind of wrapped up the year um, because this is our new exciting thing. Right. This is <laughs> this is the hot topic in dental sleep medicine right now is how to get paid, but how to get paid in network. And and, you know, if we if we kind of look at the history and and, and again, those of you that that know me and have been around a long time, um, you know, the history. Right. You, you kind of understand where we where we started with dental sleep medicine. Uh, and it, it feels like since. You know, since the dawn of the, the DSM dinosaurs, you know, that's what we were taught, right? We were taught, well, I mean, early on, there was no insurance, right? There was no in-network billing or out-of-network billing or any sort of billing. It was just pure fee-for-service. And I mean, to be perfectly honest, I, I sort of I sort of <laughs> look back fondly on those days because it was so much easier and so much more straightforward. But, you know, now we're in this medical game and we you know, have done this sort of halfway, one foot in, one foot out model for a long time. And, and you know, we were always taught, hey, screen all your patients, send them with an HST, you know, and, and look, I, I did that. We did that at SGS. We taught thousands of offices to do it that way. And, and um, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but times have kind of evolved. And so I'm excited to talk about what things look like now. Uh, what's changed in our process and protocol, and why specifically that applies to you as a as a DSM provider, or if you're new, I mean, you know, and I don't want to make assumptions here. Some of the people in the audience tonight might be brand new to sleep, um, and I get these questions all the time, where where they're kind of hesitant to jump in fully and and really make this a meaningful part of the practice because they're apprehensive about medical billing. Maybe they've tried it and had, you know, had some challenges. Maybe they just heard it's hard to get paid. So I don't even want to bother. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, as we sit here at eight o'clock at night, all of us, every single person on this call saw sleep apnea patients today. You all saw some today. You saw some yesterday. You're going to see more tomorrow. So there is sort of this overriding obligation, right? To do right by those people and take care of this and, and being able to work with their medical benefits and work in network and, and uh, you know, yourselves get paid for what you're delivering and doing uh, and getting more patients to say yes because of that is, is a win all the way around. So, you know, again, going back to the old days, we were taught screen everybody send them all home with a home sleep test, right? Get that study diagnosed and interpreted and get a physician and, and, uh, and that's your model, right? And then you're going to, you're going to get gap coverage. And if you guys don't know what gap coverage is, that's, that's a, a network insufficiency waiver essentially. And gap coverage means that the insurance company, you're, you're sort of requesting an in-network level benefit, even though you're not in network, because there is nobody in network within a certain geographic radius of the patient. Um, and that used to work well. Uh, we used to get gaps, you know, 80, 90% of the time. It was a routine thing because nobody was in network. But what's changed 
gaps are getting blocked, gaps are getting harder to push through, gaps, gaps are getting harder to get approved because more and more people have figured this out and are started to do it this way now. Uh, and, and so it's one of those things where you've got to evolve with the times. We've got to step up our game and, and start doing it in, in a fully medical way. Um, you know, this was always an interesting one, right? Charge large, uh, you know, charge a lot, right? Protect yourself, right? It was always this game of the patient is my adversary. The insurance company is my adversary. I, I've got to protect myself by I'm going to buffer it big and charge you a lot and then hope I get something there. And, and it was this very like patient unfriendly model. And I, I through my years of doing this, and I, I've worked with hundreds and hundreds of dental services. When I go into the ones that are hitting a home run, and I'm talking, you know, multi-million dollar DSM practices, patient, you know, offices that have got it all figured out, all of them don't do it this way. All of them have figured out a way to make it patient friendly, to take down all the barriers for the patients to say yes to work within the realm of what their medical benefits will allow. And they understand it's a numbers game. Yes, you might not get those huge high dollar cases and you're not going to buffer it, but you can, you, you can do a lot more damage long-term hitting a ton of singles and doubles than hitting a home run one out of 50 times. And I feel like that's what we used to be doing, right? We would wait for those home run cases um, when in reality, if we just are consistent, just like our physicians, just like the referring sources that that, that this is so critical for, um, you know, doing it like that makes more sense. And that's how we scale our businesses. So let's not look at the patient as an adversary. Let's not protect ourselves from what might or might not come. Let's do it consistently and do it the right way. Right. And as a result, what happened, right, of, of kind of following this more dated model, what happened is a lot of practices struggled. A lot of you struggled with case acceptance, still do, right? Because patients want to get that benefit. Um, we're seeing higher and higher and higher deductibles, extremely high out-of-network deductibles. Um, and, and so those are years to entry. Um, and... You know, a big one was was cultivating those physician relationships, because this was an interesting thing. And I, I, I've talked to a lot of my friends in, in dental sleep about it. It's funny when you look at at your referring physicians and you look at, you know, the MDs that ultimately, you know, like I said, you all saw sleep apnea patients today and you're all going to see some tomorrow. But eventually that well is going to dry up. Eventually you're going to take care of all the people in your practice and you've got to scale your business with referral. And when we start looking at that and start looking at the dynamics of what helps practices blow up referrals, you know, we, we always thought and, 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 you know, is it, oh, you've got to get all your credentials and you've got to be a diplomat and you've got to make the best appliances and have all the research and all. Come to find that matters much, much, much less than you having a good insurance system so that the physician referring to you knows that your patient, their patient is going to get taken care of in the same way they got taken care of in the medical practice, which is you're in network, you're going to bill it, you're going to get paid. It's, you know, it's all a covered benefit, but you're not going to do this dental model of, hey, Mr. Patient, I don't know, we don't work with medical. We're going to charge $4,500 out of pocket. That, that's our cash fee or that. You know, doing it that way is not going to scale your business. That's not going to get that physician or constantly refer more and more people. Um, and, and you know, this is my observation and all of our observations here at SGS, having done this for so long. So, and what ended up happening is the lucky few who figured this out thrived, and the rest kind of watched them and said, oh my gosh, how does that, how does that practice do 300 appliances a month? this same model. So, um, you know, what I want to talk about tonight is, 
what we've changed. And, and, you know, SGS has been around a long time. We started SGS in 2005 and, and we've worked with thousands of dentists and, and set up hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of DSM practices. Um, and so when we say we're changing our protocol up, that's not a small thing. That's a huge endeavor. That's a big investment. Um, and we put a lot of time and resources and effort into making this flip. And the reason we're doing it is because this is the way the, the, the future of dental sleep medicine looks. So I'm excited to be able to talk about it tonight. And, you know, so let's jump in. Let's jump into what the process and protocol looks like now. Forget about the old days. What's it look like today? So not much changes early on, right? We've still got our high-risk patient, the sleepy snorer, the guy with the angry spouse, the guy that comes in with excessive daytime sleepiness and they're, you know, bruxing and grinding and they have acid reflux and morning headaches and GERD and, you know, uh, hypertension and and uh, all kinds of the, the symptoms, obviously snoring. Um, but nobody's really connected the dots and identified. So we're not doing anything different here. We're engaging patients the same way. We're asking the same screening criteria and, and the same screening question. Now, one of the things, again, that's become a challenge in recent years is the direct dispensing of home sleep studies. Some states allow it. Some states don't. Some states allow the, the dentist to do a home sleep test, but then later on when we try to utilize that study uh, to justify the, the diagnosis and the necessity for an oral appliance, the insurance company comes back and says, well, where's the physician face-to-face -face that happened? And where did the physician order the study? And all, and, and it's, it's become trickier than it used to be. Um, so now what happens, and this is new in the protocol, uh, the patient is immediately scheduled for a sleep consult, and, and that's in the dental office, and that's where we're going to do our pharyngometer, rhinometer, we're going to do our airway measurements, we're, but we're now we're going to put patients in the software, right? We're going we're gonna to take them, we're going to put them in this EMR software, and we're not going to be scared about a conversation about insurance. We're going to ask, uh, <clears throat> sorry. And it'll pop up. We're gonna we're gonna ask for their insurance info because we're not scared anymore. We're not we're not dancing around it. Um, so we're gonna get their their health history info. We're gonna get their medical insurance info. We're gonna put it in the system. We're gonna schedule them for a telehealth consult. That telehealth consult is gonna be with a board certified sleep physician in your state. All states are covered. Um, and they're gonna go face to face with a sleep doctor that's gonna go over their symptoms that you already put in the software. And that physician, not you, is going to order the sleep study. Um, that's the first kind of new hurdle that we're overcoming. Um, and that sleep study is going to be delivered to them by a JCO accredited sleep lab. Again, outside of your scope, that's important for Medicare patients, right? You can't be that, you can't play a role in there. So by them seeing this sleep physician for a consult, that physician ordering a study, that study being direct delivered to the patient and returned to the sleep lab, and then seeing that same sleep physician again uh, for a for a, a, a follow-up telehealth consultation, all that happens again outside of your practice. So you've taken the patient from the hygiene chair who snores a lot and, and has symptoms, right? You brought him in for a dedicated consultation, a dedicated sleep health visit. You gather a few, a little bit more info, nothing crazy. This is all done with your sleep coordinator, right? This is not doctor time. You put them in the software and you kind of, now there's this handoff that happens uh, and you're handing them off and, and letting the diagnostic telehealth team and the insurance team take over. So all of this stuff, the next pieces that happen are outside of your practice on your behalf, but it's all happening for you, not by you. Um, so they see the physician again, they do the home sleep study, they get it back, they go over their benefits, they go or they go over their diagnosis, right? They explain what they have, the physician does, and what has what is being prescribed. Keep in mind, you've already put their insurance info in. So at this point, the, the billing team kind of takes over. And they look and say, okay, we have a diagnosed patient. They've been prescribed this. We have 
an RX and medical necessity for an appliance. Now we're going to ver verify if it hasn't been done already, their benefits, their eligibility, their deductible, what their copay is. Now keep in mind, this is all being handled by a practice that you are contracting with. Um, so that's a that's a kind of a new model, right? If we if we look at the old school way of de DSM billing, um, the dentist, you, are, are are everything, right? And the billing company, this third party, is the contractor. They're doing work for you. This model totally flips that around. Now you're the contractor doing work for this practice that you're now a contracted part of. And this practice is in network with all these different payers. So that's how we're able to work with uh, a, a new office. If we have a, you know, um, if we have a new provider in wherever, it doesn't matter where it is, um, their location gets added to these contracts. That doctor is almost in the eyes of the insurance company, almost like an associate at our new practice location in that area. And that's how we can add new providers in. Um, so we're not starting from scratch each time. Um, so the billing team's going to verify all this stuff. Now, what's really cool is this. If I pick one question I've got more frequently over the years of doing dental sleep medicine, it would be, well, how do we figure out how much to collect from the patient? How do we set our fees? How do we figure that out? How do we present it? Like, like there's this fear kind of so much question marks around, well, how do we do that? So what's cool is now you don't have to. Now there's a conversation that happens with the patient totally outside of your office where they go over the benefits, their deductible, how much it's going to cost them, what their out of pocket's going to be. Remember, it's all in network. So now we're not guessing. Now we're not hoping, oh, geez, I hope we get paid. We're going to throw everything at the insurance company and see what sticks. Now we know what we're going to get paid. So it can be very transparent to the patient up front. That conversation happens. We collect the payment. Again, outside your office, there's a credit card on file, the copay is collected, whatever deductible is collected. So all those payment arrangements are made and then they're scheduled back in your office for records. So they kind of leave there after the consult to go for their diagnostic journey, which takes some time, right? And they see the physician and they do their study. Then they get all their benefits done. Then they pay for their appliance that was prescribed or whatever their portion might be. Uh, and now they come back to your practice. And now there's no presentation, there's no selling, there's no financial conversation because it's already happened. Um, and everything you're doing at that point is, you know, is covered by insurance. Um, or if it's not, it's been collected. So again, it's all it's all worked out. Um, you document everything in the software just like you would normally, right? Your visit notes and and uh, and everything that you did. Um, all the scan, you know, if, if you did x-rays, you did a cone beam, you did a pharyngometer, you did a rhinometer, you did a scan, you did a, um, you know, whatever it is, you, you did all your stuff. And, and so you document all your, all your visits and appointment. Um, then you bring them back in for delivery. Obviously they have to sign a proof of delivery. You're going to do your AM aligner at that point or, or deliver that one as well. Um, and you know, everything's very clean, but it's all done. There's no guessing and you get to be a dentist, right? You get to be a healthcare provider and you don't have to be this <clears throat> kind of billing management company. Um, so we feel like it's the best of, of, of all the options that are out there. And we're really excited to be able to offer this and, and put it out there to our, our client practices and practices that we're working with because you know, this is hands down the most streamlined, both clinical, which has always been the case, and administrative process that's ever existed in, in dental sleep medicine. Really able to put it out there and, and work with people in this. Um, <clears throat> all the payments to the central practice, to our sleep impressions practice, and then dispersed out to the rendering providers, which is your office, your, or the contract providers, which is your office. So, you know, what you do in this model, you find the patients, you put them in the system, and, and you sort of, you know, it's a funnel, right? 
the more people you put into the top of that, some of them are going to not do the diagnostics, right? There's going to be a little bit of attrition there. And then the ones that do the diagnostics, maybe some aren't candidates. So those are going to be a little more attrition there. Uh, and then those that do the diagnostics and get diagnosed and prescribed a little bit might not accept treatment for different reasons. So there'll be drop off at different stages, but nothing substantial. And, you know, this lets you, lets you kind of run the show, right? You're just doing the clinical pieces and you're off, you're outsourcing all those other, all those other steps that are confusing. So you do your bite, your clinical records, you collect, this is $350. We actually, there's a, you know, what we call a dental patient management fee. Um, and I can explain more of how that's structured later. Um, but that's variable too. I use 350 as an example here, but there's some offices that charge a little more, a little less, um, or, or significantly more. Uh, it's a way to increase your overall collections and ex explain to the patient ahead of time so they understand what that fee is for. Um, and, you know, it's for the stuff that is not being billed to their insurance, to be clear. So you're not, you know, it's, you're not overcharging off of stuff that's being covered. So we make it clear, this is what you're getting with your insurance benefits. This is what the, the fee at the dental practice will be. And ultimately it benefits you and increases your collections. Um, you know, what happens on your behalf is kind of this concierge model, if you will, uh, that we talk about, which is all the other stuff, the stuff that you can't do or don't want to do or is time consuming and challenging to do. So all the face-to-face, -face, the telemedicine with the sleep doc, the diagnosis, the prescription, all the benefit-related stuff. Um, to me, this is gold, right? This explanation of cost to the patient, the collection of their copay, their deductible, you know, handling that component is huge, and it's where a lot of offices struggle to uh, to do this well. So why not outsource that to somebody who does it all day, every day? Um, you know, and the reimbursements come back to you. So, <clears throat> I mean, how does this all work? I sort of talked about it. I mean, there's really no, <laughs> there's no, there's no tricks here. So um, our... Our practice, our sleep impressions practice is kind of this centralized business that you'll be a contract part of or a contract partner to. Um, and there's contracts with all the major payers. Um, and that's how we bring new providers on board and we roll them into these contracts. Um, occasionally, there's some that are very regional. We just, you know, we've had some offices in, in some states where they have a big payer that's not part of these like huge major national, you know, Aetna, Cigna, UHC, Blue Cross, all those. Um, and so, and so those ones, um, sorry, uh, so those ones are, <clears throat> are, can be done as well. It just, it, it might take a little longer to, to get the contracts for those, but to be clear, the goal is to get you in network with all the major payers in your area, and and that's what's that's what's happening. Um, why are we doing it this way? It's predictable. It's guaranteed, you know, in, in as much as insurance can be guaranteed, but it's predictable. It's contracted, so there's there's understanding of what's coming in advance. You can set your fees accordingly. You could set your patient collection, your DSM you know, patient management fee, um, you know, it's lowers out of pocket costs to the patient. More people say yes, if you're a network, there's no mystery there. Uh, you know, that's, that's to me is everything. Um, and it's, it's scalable, right? If you want to do this beyond the occasional hobbyist level, like there, there are a lot of dental sleep, you know, providers that do one every two months and they're totally fine with that like i make the occasional device when a patient asks for it and i do it fee for service and if that's where your your comfort level and your volume is and you're cool with that then you should probably stay there and, and keep doing it that way um, if you are looking to scale this is one of the things that you can do that's going to help you scale especially those physician referrals right so you know why wouldn't you do it 
wait time, right? You got to wait for reimbursement occasionally. Um, you know, it's less flexibility. You can't, you know, you can't say I want to collect five thousand dollars every case. That's nice, but that's not doable. Um, it's doable if you are totally out of network, fee for service. Then, of course, you can set your fee however you want. Um, but if you, you know, so it's really a question of those two as far as where you want to go with this. Um, you know, other insurance considerations, patients expect it. You know, that's that's a thing these days. It's not a, it, it's, this is medical, right? There's no way we can avoid that. And, and they expect benefits and coverage. And if we do this kind of halfway in and out, like, well, we're dental, so we don't really work with your medical, but we'll try, but we're going to collect everything from you because we don't know what we're going to get. It's not really working with their medical. That's that's sort of this halfway, and it's it's not it's not going to get you there, you know, to scale. Um, you know, the gap waivers is is you know is is a thing that's you got to be careful of, and and ultimately, by being in network, you become that funnel. You become that that location. Like you know, I, I don't know. I'm sure some people on here have researched providers, healthcare providers in their market for certain things. Hey, I need to get my knee done or I need to get something done. I'm going to look um, or I'm going to call my insurance company or I'm going to go on my insurance company's website and see who the in-network providers are nearby that I can go see to get this procedure done. Your patients are no different even for this stuff. Um, and by being in network live with your location, you know, with these contracts, you start to show up on those searches and on those lists. Um, and the other thing is when the guy down the street from you that doesn't do it this way tries to get a gap, all of a sudden now you're blocking it, right? The insurance company is going to say, oh, no, no way. We're not paying you. We've got an in-network office down here. The patient has to go. Um, and and so you, you start to accumulate patients in your community just that way. Um, I wanted to go over some fees or at least some ranges as far as, you know, insurance company, you know, variances. And I'm showing variances because part of it is, is what you might collect as the dental patient management fee. What I've seen a lot of practices do with that, by the way, is set that fee at a level that's kind of like your, your all in cost, uh, you know, uh, I don't know how to word this, basically covering your overhead, Right. If you can collect as a dental fee to take care of that patient, and again, keep in mind, you're, this is not for the appliance or the barometer rhinometer or the office visit or the x-rays or all the stuff that's going to be billed to insurance. It's not for that, right? It's for your follow-up visits, your adjustments, your titrations, your, you know, whatever dental office stuff that's going to be separate from billing, um, so I've seen some practices set this at, you know, six hundred dollars, let's say, and that's going to cover my lab bill, my chair time, you know, my overhead for supplies and disposables and whatever. And so I'm kind of whole after I collect that, and then essentially everything that that comes from insurance over the top of that is is gravy, um, and you see some ranges there. So you know, at the end of the day, it's probably not a model that's going to get you five, six, seven thousand dollars for a case. But really, those days are 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 rapidly in the rearview mirror. <laughs> and uh, but it's going to consistent with what you know what falls in those ranges. So if you're averaging, you know, twenty five hundred bucks or or whatever it is, um, you know, that's a nice consistent reimbursement that you can do this and do this well and again scale. Would you rather do 20 of those or one at six thousand dollars? You know, that's that's kind of the ratio. So rather take care of those 20, because those 20 is going to lead to dozens more referrals from those physicians that are involved with those 20. It all snowballs and and that's how we grow. Um, you know, the VA is a big, big thing. So we have a national contract with the VA. I mean, it's not with the VA, it's through community care. Uh, so it's through the Optum and 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 Tri-West Regional, you know, regions uh, within the VA. But as part of our program and being part of this system, you'll be 
included into that uh, into that contract. Now the system with the VA is a little bit different. Um, so the way it works for the VA is is this is for patients that are being referred out through the community care system, the community care network. Um, and so we have a dedicated VA case manager. Um, and right now in every VA community care system in the country, our sleep impressions practice is already an option to refer patients to. Um, sometimes it takes a little coaching and a little uh, work within the, the people in your specific region to make sure they understand how to do that. Um, but it's already an option and already exists there because starting from scratch with the VA is really cumbersome and, and, uh, and a lengthy process. Uh, so you'd be able to plug and play into this. The referral comes into our case manager. That case manager takes it and sees, okay, hey, this is a patient in uh, Denver. Okay, who's our who's our contract partner? Who's our client practice in the in that market that I can refer patients to? They actually go into your software. They put this VA patient right in. These come ready to roll, roll for records. Your first appointment will be your records appointment. Uh, so there's no consult, there's no discussing, there's no fees, there's no nothing. They come ready to go for an appliance, and it's important that we do it efficiently and quickly. Um, so the VA works well, and, and frankly, it's a service that you know is, is much more is is much needed uh, because most of the VA healthcare systems, 170 of them across the the country, most of them are not doing oral appliance. They all pay for oral appliances, but most of them are not doing them in-house. Um, they just don't have the infrastructure, the manpower, the, the expertise, the number of factors. Most of them, there are some that do them in-house, but most are referring them all out. Um, so being able to plug into that, that, that network works well. Um, Medicare works, I stay, I keep talking about the old days. Medicare works exactly like the old days. You still got to be a DME supplier. We'll do that for you. We'll help you set that up, but it's not through our, our sleep impressions practice. It's purely just your office and you as a DME supplier, exactly like it used to be. And we will help you with Medicare. We'll do your billing for Medicare. Uh, but it's the same as it used to be. Payments go to you. They don't funnel through the the you know our, our sleep impressions entity. It's all the same as it as it used to be for Medicare specifically. The one difference, and this used to be a challenge, is we used to say, well, for Medicare patients, like let's say you've got you know sweet Mrs. Jones that's been your dental patient for thirty years and. And she, you know, she has sleep apnea. She says she has sleep apnea. Um, it used to be you had to sort of like let her go. Like, okay, well, I want you to go see the local sleep doctor and sort of hope that she went and do that, does that and, and hope that she gets referred back to you for an appliance. Um, whereas now this new model that I just talked about works exactly the same with her. She can see the telehealth physician they can order the sleep test, deliver it to her, return it. All of that's Medicare covered. So, but the the nice thing is you're not sort of losing control over what may or may not happen. Um, obviously, she still has to be a candidate for an appliance. The physician still has to prescribe it, but that pipeline and that model is a lot more efficient and a lot more condensed than it would be if you just sort of send them away and hope they come back. Uh, so Medicare is nice like that. So payments are made primarily through for all the private payers through our sleep impressions practice. So the patient collection and or the insurance reimbursement uh, is all paid in through our, our sleep impressions practice and then paid out to you twice monthly. Um, the stuff that goes direct to you would be out of network billing that's done. And there's still going to be some. I mean, the, the, obviously, the there is no solution that has 100% in-network coverage. There's too many random small plans and stuff. So there'll still be some out-of-network stuff, and we work with that, um, and Medicare. So those go direct to you, and it's more of a billing service, billing company model on those ones. Um, everything is not nickel and dimed in this model. So the fees for the diagnosis, the telemed, the, all that stuff, none of that's to you. That's to the patient, mostly covered by their insurance. So it's 
super low cost for everybody involved, but it doesn't cost you anything. Doesn't cost you for all the, uh, you know, VOBs and pre-auths and all that consultation, all, all the stuff with the patient. That's not, you know, it's not like, oh, there's 25 for this and 150 for this and none of that. It's all built in. And the cost for that in-network stuff is built into the fees that I already showed you. So there's no above and beyond. What, what you saw on that screen for reimbursements, that's with the fees that are already built in. So there's no, you know, full transparency. There's no games there. For Medicare and out-of-network stuff, it's more like a traditional kind of third-party biller like you've probably all experienced before, um, where there's just a flat percentage fee that's billed to you after you've been reimbursed by one of those models. So that's a little different than the, the in-network stuff. Um, you know, I love this picture, right? The the uh, work smarter, not harder. Uh, and, and I think this is probably the best dental sleep medicine example of that uh, of that saying right um you know this this is a way to leverage other people's expertise and leverage the ability to join networks and be in network that you probably don't have the ability to a lot of time you know if you just called you know Aetna in your local market said hey I'm a dentist I want to join they're probably gonna say no right the network's closed uh, you're not an oral surgeon, so you can't get in or this or that. There's going to be all these roadblocks. Um, and then, you know, who knows what the contract is. Uh, so being able to jump in this way is a much faster path to be able to get in network coverage and kind of be on par with your physician referral sources, which is what we want to do. And that's how we're going to grow our business. So, uh, you know, I'm, I, I've been, <laughs> those of you that know me know I've been doing this a long, long time. And, you know, I'm obviously super passionate about Echo Vision. And that's, you know, that's my baby. And we've been doing that a long time. And, and there is absolutely no better clinical way to do dental sleep medicine than that, hands down. Um, but it's exciting to me that we finally have this administrative piece nailed down and, and we're able to to bring that to our client practices too, because you know this is this is that secret sauce that a lot of people have been missing. So, um, as just to kind of further the discussion or talk about next steps, I'm going to leave this slide up there for a minute because um, it's just a QR code that you can scan or take a picture of with your phone or do a little whatever, however you, you open it up. Um, but if you want some more information, because there's a lot of questions that are going to come up that are very practice specific that are not appropriate to talk about here tonight. So I don't want to go over that. Uh, but if you'd like more information, if you'd like to discuss what this would look like for you or what your options are, um, because if you're an existing SGS client and we're already working with you and we've already got your practice equipped and set up and trained, then adding this is going to look a little different than if you're brand new and you have nothing to do with SGS so far. Um, so what I would say is scan that code and put your info in and one of our DSM specialists will reach out and kind of, kind of discuss your options and, and give you an, a, give you kind of that one-on-one -on -one time to go over what this looks like and, and how you could add it. Um, <clears throat> we do a lot of in-office consults uh, if you're new to sleep, that's definitely the next step for you. Um, so if you're new to this or, or not even new to sleep, but new to SGS and, and we haven't worked with you in any way so far, um, then schedule one of those. So put your info in and, you know, whoever reaches back out, just talk to that person uh, and get some time scheduled for them to come into your practice. They'll bring everything, right? Because what we'd like to do is show you the entire A to Z process. How you're going to go from patient screening through the software, through the exam and the hands-on and the clinical and the records like you see with the pharyngometer, rhinometer there on the screen, um, through the entirety of the process to kind of test drive it and make sure it's the right fit. Because not every practice here is the right fit for what we're doing in sleep. And so we want to make sure it's a mutually you know, beneficial relationship. Um, if you prefer a more group type setting, we have seminars uh, where we're going to talk about all this and essentially do what we would do in office over the course of two days. 
uh, at, at one of these upcoming courses and you see the dates and locations coming up in the next couple months. Uh, so there's a lot of good opportunities there as well. You can use code uh, SleepTV24 for 50% off uh, seminar registration. Uh, so if you'd rather do that, uh, those options are there too. You just go to the SGS website. All right, I'm going to leave this on the screen. So if you haven't had a chance to, to scan in, then we can do that. Uh, and let's see here. Go over and look at... Chat questions. I see. Uh, I see in the webinar chat, uh, uh, our our clinical director, Dr. Jeff Harrison, chimed in. So he's he's kind of he's one of our resident experts. Uh, Dr. Jeff is, uh, you know, a, a lot of you guys have worked with him. So his his information, his email, his cell phone number, everything's on there. Feel free to reach out to him. Um, you know, he can help with any questions on this. Uh, but, but, but what other questions do I see? How many providers will be allowed in a given area? Um, so we we don't, we actually can't. I mean, it's illegal uh, to offer exclusivity within a certain, you know, within payers, right? We can't say, oh, you're exclusive in this area, you know, with United Healthcare or whatever. So there's no geographic restrictions on this. What I can say is that, you know, we're limiting it to practices that we're working with um and you know right now it's it's new so there's an opportunity to kind of be first to market in us you know in any given area um but we we don't have any geographic restrictions uh on it because frankly you could be across the street from somebody doing this and you guys may never cross paths with patients because there's simply so many of them and if you're doing it this way, it, it, you know, it can, it can scale. Um, other questions, let's see. Actually see other questions, that's good. Maybe I answered all, I see some of them are, are answered already. So that's good. Um, <clears throat> I did say, or I saw earlier on, there were some questions on, on CE credits. I know we're, or short of our hour that we typically run this, um, but that's okay. Uh, so the way C credits work is we've already got all your info for signing up for the course. So after the uh, the webinar is concluded, to whatever email address you used when you registered, uh, your your credits will be will be sent out there. So you'll get your C CE certificates for that. Um, Gosh, I see a lot of familiar faces on here, so I'm excited to to be able to work with some of you guys because I, I really think there's there's a good opportunity here to to do this and and do this well and and really really scale up some of your offices because as I look through this list, gosh, there's some of you that I know have been doing sleep for quite some time and uh, and you know possibly struggling with this or or this is kind of a good missing piece so. If we can help you scale and help you kind of crest past that that plateau that you're on, whatever level that's at, um, I know this is going to help take it to the next level. So that's really cool. All right. Well, if there if there's no more questions, um, uh, what was I going to say? There is more chat. Hold on. <laughs> uh. <clears throat> Yeah, Dr. Harrison mentioned uh, something in the webinar chat. I think that's worth talking about too. As part of this, um, we're we're you know we've talked for years about the necessity to have a sleep care coordinator, right? And that's somebody in your practice that's the you know the the sleep champion, the sleep ambassador, the person, not the doctor, but the person within the practice that's kind of quarterbacking this program. Um, and we've got some great sleep coordinators here at SGS. And one of the things that we're doing as part of this, because really this is a partnership, you know, this is not, Hey, you know, 
pat you on the back and say good luck and and use the system as best you can we're in this together the our success hinges on your success um so as part of the program we're assigning a sleep coach a sleep care coordinator um, somebody that's going to directly be responsible for your practice's success in this. We have a new practice success manager along with a, a team of some clinical sleep care coordinators. So as part of your onboarding, you'll be assigned that, that sleep coach. That's somebody that's going to be on site in your practice for multiple days, making sure your systems are implemented and running the right way. They're going to provide coaching calls and, and consulting and mentoring as things progress. Um, and they'll be your primary point of contact moving forward within SGS, uh, but also as part of this whole model. Um, and, you know, that's a huge investment on our part in making sure you succeed. Said so this, this only works if we, you know, if we blow it all up together. And so we're really putting a lot of effort and a lot of resource into that to, to see it through because, it can't just be a one and done thing. It can't be just, hey, take these webinars or or do these Zoom trainings. It, it's got to, it requires that hand holding and that hands on commitment. So as part of this, that's, you know, that's a big piece. Uh, and that's that's definitely part of it as well. So thanks, Jeff, for, for mentioning that because that's, that's important. <clears throat> All right. Um, well, guys, I appreciate everyone jumping in and joining. And I see we like our, our attendance doubled during the webinar. So I, I hope that everybody caught most of it because when I started, there was half as many people. Uh, so if you didn't catch it, I know the replay will be available on Facebook. Uh, and I know that the whole thing will be available on, on YouTube somehow down the road. So just call the office. We'll, we'll get you the recording if you want to rewatch it or you want to have somebody on your team, take a peek. We, we've got that as well. Uh, but like I said, best way to, to kind of talk through next steps, scan that code, put your info, talk to our team, and the right person will be in touch to kind of discuss options and where you can go from here. So I appreciate everybody hopping on. Thank you for joining Sleep TV, our first of 2024. Our next one's not going to be about insurance. I'm not sure what the topic is, but it'll be more... There'll be another kind of hot, trendy topic in dental sleep medicine, uh, but we will circle back to insurance uh, soon after, I'm sure, because this is where all the questions seem to always lie. So thank you all very much for jumping in tonight, and, uh, and I'll talk to everybody soon.